Hello dear endoscopists and welcome to our new episode. After the fantastic response to our last video on Poem for Achalasia, also known as a poem, we are excited to continue the journey with another thrilling technique, the Z-poem or peroral endoscopic myotomy for Denker's diverticulum. So let's jump right in. I'm Mohammed Abdel Hafiz and this is The Endoscopist. Zinker's diverticulum is a condition involving a pouch formation in the upper esophagus, which was first described by the German pathologist Friedrich Albert von Zenker way back in 1877. It can lead to difficulty of swallowing, regurgitation of food, and range of other unpleasant symptoms that affects patients' quality of life. Over time, a variety of treatment options for Zenker's diverticulum have emerged, including open surgery, rigid endoscopic approaches, and flexible septotomy. But some of these methods can be more invasive, come with certain risks, or simply be less effective. That's when the Z-Poem technique comes into the picture. This innovative, minimally invasive endoscopic procedure offers an amazing alternative for treating Zinker's diverticulum, potentially with fewer complications rate, faster recovery times, and better effectiveness. Before we get into the step-by-step -step demonstration of this technique, I would like to express my gratitude to Olympus for providing us with their new X1 processor and for Herba Company for supplying us with the V3 device. Both of these fantastic devices have truly enriched our experience with the surgery space interventions. I will make a dedicated video to review these devices and their impact on our daily practice in the near future, so please stay tuned. Today, I will be presenting a case of 82-year-old male patient who came to us with dysphagia and regurgitation of food due to a large Zenker's diverticulum. After discussing the treatment options with the patient, we decided to go for Z-Poem technique. Without further delay, let's explore the fascinating world of Z-Poem. I will be sharing exclusive real-life footage with minimal editing or cut of this case, breaking down each step so you can gain a thorough understanding of the procedure. You will not want to miss it. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you are loving our content. And don't hesitate to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. And be sure to check our last video on POEM technique for achalasia, the link will be here or in the description below. So, let's get started. So we'll start now by performing our upper endoscopy and to evaluate the Zinker diverticulum. So the patient is intubated. You have to be very careful when you're observing Zinker diverticulum. You have to locate the esophageal lumen first, as you can see here, here is the esophageal lumen. So I will push gently and we will go through the upper esophageal sphincter to the lumen. We just have a quick look that the stomach is empty before we start our procedure. So the stomach is quite empty. I will withdraw my scope very slowly till the upper esophageal sphincter. We'll just clean here a little bit and we'll go slowly, slowly backwards and here is the sphincter. And we can see here the septum of the diverticulum. I will try to go inside the diverticulum or to intubate the diverticulum. As we can see here it is, has some fluid remnants. It's something like three centimeters uh, large diverticulum. And here our septum or the cricopharyngeal muscle. So theoretically, almost all the cases of Zenker diverticulum will have a spasm here in the upper esophageal sphincter, which with time will lead to formation of this diverticulum. 
Okay, so I'll take a picture here. So we'll start now. I have uh, Miss Andrea Dots, our assistant today. She has a great experience with third space endoscopy. She performed hundreds of um, third space endoscopy, ASDs and poems and sinker diverticulum. So we're glad to have her today with us. Uh, we have we are working with X1 Olympus device, and for uh, high frequency you are using Vio3 Herba device. The settings you will see on the monitor right now. So we will start by injecting uh, fluid in the submucosa, and there are different techniques for that poem. So. And these questions, you will not have a, a, a clear answer for them. Should you start above the diverticulum? Should you start really on the diverticulum and the septum? Should you do vertical or horizontal uh, cut for the mucosa? I would say it doesn't make any difference. What I will show you today is our technique. So usually I do my myotomy directly on the diverticulum here on the septum. So we'll inject saline here. We will do a small mucosal cut and then we'll do the tunneling in the lumen side and a tunnel in the diverticulum side. So the most important thing is to achieve a good myotomy. I'm using now the master needle from Olympus. I think here is fine. So, raus bitte. Okay, yeah. yeah. As we can see, it looks nice. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so we injected something like three milliliters uh, normal saline. We use we use uh, normal saline with some indigo carmine. I'll use now the knife. This is the triangular TTG knife from Olympus. I'll try to pass the diverticulum again before I push my... As you can see, it's quite tight here. As you can see here, this knife has a jet function. That means that you can inject with it. And we'll start our cut here. Okay, the mess around, bitte. So we will cut here. Line. So we'll inject again and rouse and we will cut. For the cutting I'm using endocut eye mode. So I think I will extend it again. Okay, rein bitte. And I will try to start my tunneling here. We'll start in the diverticulum area. Raus bitte. Now I will use spray coagulation to open the tunnel. So here is the tunnel and the diverticulum side. I will keep myself near to the, the muscle layer trying to keep the mucosa intact during the whole procedure. I'm utilizing the cap. This is a, a conal shaped cap from uh, Fuji. It's very nice and useful for tunneling. And as you can see, the, the submucosa is already dissected in this area. So we are reaching here the base of the diverticulum. Rein bitte. I'll try to inject here just to see if I still have any submucosa here. So I think we are finished here with the tunneling. <clears throat> now the uh, second part is to do the tunnel in the lumen. So I'm trying to inject here. I think we still have some muscle layer which is covering the submucosa. So I will try to use again the cap to utilize the submucosa in this area. Uh-huh. Okay, raus bitte. Again with the spray coagulation.
And I will use the cap again to try to enter the third space. It's still not open, I did it. The mouse. Okay, we're getting there. Fine. Here you can see the thumb mucosa, here is the thumb, mouth bitter. Now we are inside, rein bitte. So the main problem is the, the opening is too tight, so maybe I will extend it a little bit raus. Here you can see here a nice submucosa. We'll cut it. Line. Okay, we are inside the tunnel now. So we are about to finish. Raus, bitte. I always keep, I uh, try to keep the, the cut of the mucosa clean and small, which will help us to close it at the end very tightly. Right. Again, injection, round. It's very important to keep the mucosa intact. Fine. Round. Okay. We have a nice tunnel here, Ryan. Raus. So we are tunneling now on the human side. Of course, you have to use CO2 when you are doing this procedure. Okay. I think we are finished with tunneling. So I will start now to cut the muscle layer. So we tunneled in this area with the side of, of, the, of the, uh, the verticulum, and then we did the tunnel on the human side. I see a bleeding, so I will try to stop this bleeding first. Just coagulation. Okay, stopped. And you can see here, here is the septum. Here is the cricopharyngeal muscle. here, and I will push my knife here, fine. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to, to dissect, this here, this bridge here. Okay, raus bitte. So I will just hook on the muscle fibers, and I will just cut. You can use uh, spray coagulation to cut, like this, or you can use endocut Q also like this. So it's your preference. So I will cut here again. I just have to make sure that the mucosa will stay intact on both sides. So you can see here the thick uh, cricopharyngeal muscle, which is causing for him some problems. And this here. Let's try another mode, which is called precise cut from Herba. Let's see how the difference. Precise sect. We'll go like this. So it's a little bit more slow than the other modes. 
but it's more precise. But to be honest, I don't like it for myotomy, so I will change again for spray coagulation. Again, I will hook here. Nice. The beauty of that poem is that you can cut very deep till you open the mediastinum if you want. That would not be a problem. And then you will close the tunnel. So it's quite a safe technique. Again, I hook on the muscle fibers. And I'll stop here, not to injure the mucosa. Then I will hook at this side and then cut through. We'll go back a little bit. So we have here some fibers. I will cut them now. Again, I will hook here. As you can see, the cricopharyngeal muscle is almost completely cut. I'll go again deep. Still some fibers here. So no big worries if you do a perforation here because as long as your mucosa is intact, nothing, no complications will happen. Now I'll go outside of my tunnel and have a look. So as you can see here, the, the lumen is completely open. And if we will have a look here, I think we still have some fibers here. I it. Okay, very nice. I think, I think we finished. I will go again inside the tunnel to have a look if there's any remnant muscle fibers. I will cut here a small cut out with it. So we are at the end here. Okay, I'm totally satisfied. Actually, you can't reach this depth of cutting or myotomy using the standard septotomy, and this is the beauty of that poem. I think we finished. What we'll do now is to close the tunnel opening with a few clips. As we can see here, we still have the sac or the, the pouch of the mucosa, which is the, the Z poem would be criticized for leaving the, the pouch, for leaving the, the pouch um, after cutting the, or after performing the myotomy. But all our experience and the data which is published showed that the patients doesn't have any problems. So theoretically, yes, you have the sac inside or the pouch. May the patient in long term will have some regurgitation. But from our experience and from the published data, there is no problem till now encountered with this remnant pouch. Again, here the upper of the sphincter is quite open. This difficulty at the beginning, we don't have any more. With just gentle pushing of the scope, we can go inside. Now I will draw the scope. I will try to find the upper border of my incision. Out with it. 
So as you can see, it's, it's quite, it's quite um, tight space. So we are doing our best to find the upper border of the, of the region. We can also start here. Okay, so up. So usually we need something like four to five clips to close such tunnels. So we put our second clip and just go a little bit backwards to have more space. Uh -huh. hmm? I'll just wait till I have a visualization. It's very important. So we will try to go again in the direction of the lumen, then I will withdraw. Out with it and so up very nice. While well, closing the tunnel, and it looks very nice. Again, go to the piece of gel human, push your clip outside and out with it. Kleiner in this end. okay. I think I will need yeah, one or two clips more. So out. So up. Very nice. Noch ein clip. So it is I think it's already closed, but we will put for security reason. Or for safety reasons, another clip here. <coughs> Out with it. And to me in. Warte, ich gehe ein bisschen. Ja, noch hier. Let me see if I can put another clip here. Yes. So, abschießen. Perfect. So I'm happy with how it looks like now. So I will try to give some inflation. So on the left side, we have the pouch or the diverticulum. And on the right side, we have the normal esophageal lumen. So I will give some water just to get a little bit and I will go through. It's quite open, looks nice. And the pouch is you can almost, it's almost gone. Yeah, it's here. I don't want to push too hard not to open the, the, the mucosal opening again. Uh, yeah. So usually we, we perform uh, barium, follow, uh, bar, uh, barium swallow after the procedure just to make sure that everything is tight. I think we put a clip here. So I put another clip here. When it comes to closing the, the, the tunnel opening, I'm a little bit conservative, so I like to put, to make it tight and leakage proof. And it looks beautiful. Out with it. Perfect. So now we close it with five clips. If you can see here, we have the mucosal edge at this area, and we are capturing as well mucosa of the other side. Very nice. And we finished. I will just do some palpations at the, at the patient's neck to make sure that there is no emphysema. We didn't open the mediastinum, which is also good. 
and we finish. Danke schön. Fertig, danke. And there you have it, the Z-point procedure for this 82-year-old male patient was a complete success. It took only 18 minutes to perform and the patient was able to start drinking on the same day and eating on the second day. He was discharged 48 hours after the procedure, satisfied and happy with the outcome. This case is just one example of how Z-point can offer minimally invasive and effective solution for treating patients with Denker's diverticulum, greatly improving a patient's quality of life. Thank you so much for joining us on this fascinating journey. We hope you found this video informative and engaging. If you did, please consider sharing it with your peers and colleagues. If you have any questions, thoughts or experience you would like to share, please leave them in the comments below. We always love hearing from our viewers. Until our next video, Please stay curious and keep exploring the ever-evolving world of endoscopy. Take care and see you next time. Ciao.